are men really wanting to commit? Like, are men really wanting those older traditional values? When you give someone who hasn't earned the trust, earned um, the, the resources and the, you know, things that you have to offer, it says that you don't really value yourself. Mm -hmm. Because if you tell me you met the sauce and the crust, but he, maybe he's, you know, balding and he wasn't tall enough. I'm be like, girl, that's still a good pizza. Mm -hmm. You better go, you better stay eat with that, that pizza. Man. Yes, eat that pizza. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you want this thing so bad. I want a man more than anything. I want to find my purpose made, my husband. I want to make babies, but I won't even introduce myself to you. I won't even talk to you. But I'll go to the gym. <laughs> I'm not there. <laughs>I spend so much time talking to my clients about the importance of proper nutrition outside of the gym. And the number one area of struggle is not getting enough protein. So Boss and Kevin developed Vita Hustle One superfoods for this very reason. This plant-based blend contains 86 superfood ingredients that support muscle recovery and overall well-being. Um, it's not just about what you do in the gym. It's also about how you fuel your body. So try Vita Hustle One Superfood in vanilla bean, dark cocoa, which is my fave, or superfood greens in the popular berry flavor. Use code MEAGAIN for 15% off your first order. Hey everyone, it's me again, your host Dominique and my girl... Nature. We are here with another episode of Me Again. Today, for all the single ladies out there, um, everyone was saying, guys, we need to have something for the single ladies. So I brought on my favorite single friend, <laughs> uh, my best friend, Summer, and an amazing relationship expert. You guys have probably heard of her before, Spicy Madi. We are so excited to talk about Girl Talk um, and how to find love how to sustain love, how to spice up your relationship. We have all of that coming soon. So thank you ladies for coming today. Yes, and the crowd thank goes you. wild. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so our topic today is finding love and how to sustain it with your partner. So I thought something fun would be early to open up the conversation of how did we all find our partners? How did we find our past partners? Okay. Did that work? Did it not work? What's that like? So, Spicy, I'd love you to introduce yourself and talk about your background, your man, girl, <laughs> all that good stuff. Hi, uh, you guys. Spicy Madi, relationship expert, magnetic matchmaker, founder of the Spicy Life Relationship Consulting Firm, where I help you attract your purpose mate. Uh, the origin story of me and Bay. Um, <laughs> so, I did not necessarily uh care for my husband at first the origin story <laughs> is that um i was doing i was doing my podcast and there was a guy that i wanted to interview that was in beyonce's music video um that i didn't get a chance to interview because i wasn't able to be on set that day i asked my co-host at the time to set it up happy hour introduce me and instead of bringing the like actor from Beyonce's music video who I requested, he brought my husband. Oh. And so I was like, oh, you're not who I requested. Like, dang, I thought he was, you know, going to bring a boy. I wasn't feeling my husband because I just come out of a relationship at the time. So I was also in a funk. So mm. the person who showed up, I didn't see him in all his greatness. Mm. I was in my feels. I was in my sentiments. I was in my recovery mode. Um. Fast forward, I did like the healing work. I was like, okay, I need to apply my own tools. I'm giving all this relationship advice. I need to use it on myself. I'm ready for my partner. Uh, then did not feel like it, but my homegirl invited me out to a, a fight party. I literally am like, ah, I have to practice what I preach. So I'm going to put this mascara on. I'm going to put this eyeliner on and I'm going to show up. Uh, and went back to like, you know, the, I went to the event and ran back into my husband who was there <laughs> and it was a wrap like inseparable from that day. I saw a different oh. version of him. I saw him through a different lens. Cause I had done the work. Of course he tells everybody like he didn't need a relationship coach or a matchmaker. I'm like, what do you think I was doing? <laughs> the entire time I was using all of my methods on you. Um, but, uh, being in a different headspace and different mindset is what was able, I think, to like bring us together and make me make that healthy choice. And so like a part of what I teach at this spicy life is, you know, transform perspective, fuel connections. Like that's like our motto. And it really is true. And that's what I do for my clients as well. If I can transform your perspective about it, I can help you feel the connection to your purpose mate. Okay. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yes. That, I mean, yeah. you already sparked so many questions, but 
we'll go and we'll continue to have girl chat of like how we met our significant others. So long time ago, 10 years or 11 years ago now, my husband, boss and I, well, he wasn't my husband back then, but I was with my girlfriend, Summer, hey. and she is the best wingman woman. Right? <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes I even give her credit for me and him even really interacting because he was pointing at me. Very classy, very respectful. <laughs> Wait, see where we were at? We were at Greystone Sunday. We were frequent. We were frequenters there, <laughs> um, and we were there. And he was just pointing at me. And at the time, Bianca, is so, sorry, Summer and I. She's got three names. Summer, <laughs> right? She's got three names: Summer, Bianca, and Yonk. So, however it flows out, just so you know. <laughs> so, um, Summer and I were at the club, and we didn't care. We were we were the ones that would just go hop in front of the line. They would let us in. Oh, okay, we just walk in, go yeah. get a drink at the bar. Yeah. We didn't know anything about table sections or anything. So we're in the dance floor at this point. The man is <laughs> pointing me out. I'm ignoring it. She's like, "Girl, that man's pointing at you." I'm ignoring him, ignoring him. He sends the security over to tap on mm-hmm. me. And I'm like, no, it's okay. I'm fine. And she's like, all right, whatever. He comes back. The security comes mm-hmm. back. Security. Why is he not coming at right. this point? <laughs> Nobody knows. But the security comes back, taps me. And he's like, he really wants you to come over there. So Bianca's like, girl, just go. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, okay, fine. So I step over there and I'm like, I'm only staying here if my friend can come on, come into the t- section with me. Yeah. And he, and he's like, well, where is she at? And the sections were like up. And so she was behind and she was, she's right here. <laughs> and he's like, all right. So he like lifts her up. And at that point we're drinking Patron shots oh, and having a blast. And so from there, um, the night ended and the next day we were going to court with paying a ticket or something. This one. LA life. You LA know life. what I'm talking about? Um, and this t- Houston number is calling me and I'm like, who's this number? And she's like, girl, that's the guy from last night. And I'm like, yes. and it, practically she was like, answer it. And she like yeah. clicked in. I'm like, hello. <laughs> and from there we went back and we met him and, um, it was just like, it was all coming back. I'm like, oh my gosh, this guy was really cool. And this is this. And from there, we just continued our relationship. And he it was so much let fun. You go, girl. It was a wrap for me. Hold on tight. Right. <laughs> so who's so next? Sweet. Who's next? We got- oh, mine is really short and sweet. Okay, what's yours? We met on Twitter. Oh. I was in high school, y'all. So it was November 1st, 2013 to be exact. Oh. He DM'd me on Twitter. He said he saw me on Instagram, but he didn't think I was going to respond. Mm. So he found me on Twitter, DM'd me there. Mm-hmm. And he's from Jersey. I'm from New York. So- we were talking for a while before we actually met in person. And again, I'm 17 at the time. So it's all like, and now we're here. Oh, you're a baby. Oh. Yeah. But he slid through that DM though. He slid through my DMs. <laughs> that was yeah. early sliding. That was right. Those he are slid early. Those before like we knew about right when the DMs <laughs> came about. <laughs> what oh was my. it? It goes down in the DMs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. That now- is funny. I wish I had these like mm-hmm. shoot for the stars <laughs> over the net world series kind of stuff. <laughs> I, uh, my last, you know, my longest relationship, I met him in college. We were just hanging out, mutual friends, and yeah, we just were hanging out. And he liked me, I liked him, and it just kind of just naturally happened. But other relationships, I've, you know, I've tried it all. I've met a guy I dated on Hinge. I've met, you know, through mutual friends, you know, girlfriends and stuff like that, but that's it. So I guess, Spicy, this is a great time to talk about, like, how have things changed, right? Because Mm -hmm. before she met her last guy that she was dating on Hinge, Summer and I were both talking. We were like, we would never go on dating apps. (laughs) No, you know, that's so inauthentic. Right. Not organic. But now it's feeling like, like, how do you find them? So Mm -hmm. I'm sure you're looking to hear, like, how have things changed? Mm -hmm. What are, what's advice that you could give for the modern day woman who's not, so modern day still has a lot of traditional values right Mm. it's like what are your thoughts okay so i think what you're asking is like what's been the change from like maybe traditional encounters to this new like added technology Mm -hmm. right of like digital encounters that you can now make i think that the perspective of looking at it as a positive place of like great we can now use technology as a resource even when it comes to like dating and meeting people and making connections Um, has been very helpful because hundreds and thousands of people have met each other online and had amazing experiences, gotten married and started families, right? Like you even met Bay on in the digital space. I think though that what we see sometimes is like inauthentic or, you know, not organic. I want to meet somebody in person. 
If your schedule and your lifestyle isn't conducive to that right now, we need to use the tools that are in front of us, that are giving us access to someone who may not necessarily be in our neighborhood or in our village anymore. So we got to use these, you know, these these tools, these dating apps as an opportunity to not necessarily date the person digitally, but make the connection, the initial encounter. So the same way if I saw you across the room and I thought that you could be somebody that was interesting, I would come up to you and introduce myself. It's the same thing with me on a dating app or online. I'm going to just introduce myself. I'm just going to make that like introduction. And based on your energy, if it matches mine, we could take it from there. But I welcome the technology because I don't think that we're living at a time where it would be as easy to meet people if the older that we get, our lifestyles aren't as conducive to it. Cause you're talking about the last relationship was like college. Right. And yeah. so if you think about your schedule now versus like when you were in college, exactly. <laughs> night and day, the, the level of like awareness, even in mm-hmm. life experiences that you have had the scheduling when it comes to like your workload or even mm-hmm. like extracurricular activities, it can be challenging when you aren't putting yourself in an environment to meet people all the time, which is why I'm always like, okay, if you're not super on team, like let me meet this person online then you need to balance it out. If you're going to say like, well, I don't want to date digital anymore. Then you need to balance it out with the social life. Well, I'll say I gave it a good try. Like I was on, I started um, the last relationship that I was in. I had met on Hinge and I gave it a really good try. Like I'm like, okay, I'm going to put forth. I was positive. I was going to put forth the effort. And I was like swiping and and uh, making the preferences and trying to make sure, like, okay, I'm intentional mm-hmm. and wanting to find someone. Um, but it was exhausting, <laughs> and it was a lot of work. And I'm I'm working all day. I'm getting off of work, excited about okay, let me go and swipe yeah. and see who's like and you know what's going on. Um, but it was a lot of like sifting through. Yes, and I did. I, I felt like I'm like okay, what else can I? you know, do it was just, it wasn't as it, I wasn't, I didn't, I feel like I didn't really get a good, um, feel of yeah people really coming like, like good matches for me. Like that mm-hmm. would, you know, match me. Well, I'm like the way that I compare it is probably to like speed dating, right. Where, uh, we're in a room with like 25 other men, the chances of your husband being in that room you're still going to have to experience the energies of all those 25 mm-hmm. men to get to your one. Mm-hmm. The problem that we are experiencing with like digital dating is that it's an influx of like all these men that we now have, you know, options and we have to sift through it. It's like, you know, shopping at Ross. You're like, OK, there might be one good item in here, but I got to go through like 25 things to like find that one good thing. But that's how it would be, whether it's in person or whether it's online, but the sure. difference with online is I don't have to leave my couch to do it. Mm-hmm. So it does get exhausting because you have an abundance of options mm-hmm. that you don't have on a normal day basis. You're not going to meet 25 like single eligible bachelors on a normal day. Right. But either way, you're still going to have to do an exchange of communication with those to get to your person. And so the experience that you had online, yes, it, it may have been challenging. I always encourage people like Don't give it up. We need to like balance it with other social things. Mm. And so if you're not going out like with your friends to uh, places where you can connect with other people or even in solo going out by yourself, Mm -hmm. it's going to be hard to make those organic connections in person. And what I mean by that is it's not enough for you to just go to a restaurant for margarita night with your homegirls. It needs to be, okay. if I do go to this restaurant, I'm actually going to force myself to talk to three men while I'm here. Oh, wow. I'm actually going to join organizations and clubs that the type of man that I want to be with exists. So like if you were to describe your person, right, and you're like, okay, well, I want, you know, maybe he has a college degree or, you know, he does this for a living. Um, He's into, you know, these kind of sports. Okay, well, go to those games. Go to, you know, those, um, you know, bars that he would frequent. Like, where does your person exist? And a lot of times we don't frequent the places that men exist. Right. We're going to Pilates class. Girl, he's not in Pilates class. (laughs) So (laughs) you need to. And and, and, uh, you're you're you guys are, you know, all in the fitness community. A lot of us want these like fit, healthy people, but we won't speak to men when we go to the gym. We will not introduce ourselves. We won't go up to someone and be like, oh, can you teach me how to use that machine? But yeah, you want this thing so bad. I want a man more than anything. I want to find my purpose made, my husband. I want to make babies, but I won't even introduce myself to you. I won't even talk to you. But I'll go to the gym. I'm not okay. <laughs> when I say you, I'm sorry. When I say you, I'm not talking about 
about you're talking about the female species. Yeah. I'm talking mm-hmm. about like these limiting um, beliefs and these limitations that we put on the things that we say that we want. We say we want these things. And I can tell when a person actually believes that they can have those things based on their behaviors. Right. So if I'm like, I want to lose 20 pounds, but I'm not doing the behaviors to support me losing the 20 pounds. That means I don't really believe that I can lose the 20 pounds, mm-hmm. right? From the working out to the clean eating, to the water, to the um, hanging out, you know, with, with friends who are also on the same diet, to giving up alcohol, like all the things that would be required for me to lose the 20 pounds that I need to lose. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's just getting personal. <laughs> it's just getting personal. <laughs> I, yeah, the baby weight. What? The baby weight. My stomach ain't bouncing back like it used to. I'm just uh, trying. I told you. <laughs> I'm going to I'm come to your gym. I would go. I need to be working out with you guys, right? And I literally just started back in training because I'm one of those people that I'm like, I need a coach. I need a support system. I need that voice of yeah. reason in my ear. And it's the same thing when it comes to dating. If you're single and you're like, why can't I get this thing right? You need a relationship coach nine times out of 10. Yeah. Because you're trying to do it on your own. There is strength in numbers. There's strength when you have the energy of other people who have the exact same mindset with the same goal and same intentions that want your best interest in mind. Right. So even if when it comes to the type of friends that you choose to like hang out with, if they're miserable and they don't believe in love, we kind of got to be with the friends that really are happy in the relationship or really excited for mm. you to find love. Mm-hmm. So it's all what we're exposing ourselves to, but also what we're doing on a daily basis. Right. 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 I am so intrigued to hear you say to put yourself out there more because my thought process, right. Is which luckily I don't have to do this anymore. I'm not <laughs> married. But my thought process is that I would never approach a man. Okay. I was like, ask that too. I'm, a, I'm all for putting, like I tell her all the time. I'm like, girl, go to Whole Foods uh-huh. in the pre-made section <laughs> okay. around five o'clock. They're there. The, the bachelors that have nobody to cook for them uh-huh. at home, they're getting in the healthy ones. They're at the smoothie bar or they're getting their pre-made meals at Whole Foods, right? And so we joke about this. I'm like, put yourself in that position. But once you're there, for me, I'm like, there's no way that I can be like, Oh, hey, boo. Like, right. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> this is where we have to transform our perspective. Okay. Right. So the, what you guys are telling yourselves or what you're under the belief of is if I speak to the thing that I want, mm-hmm. I am being in my masculine and I am the aggressor and I am taking on the male role and I am the person initiating and hollering. Mm. Okay. Right. That's not the correct perspective. Mm. Okay. The correct perspective is, is if I speak to the thing that I want, I am now being more attractive, putting myself in in sight of, and also in the like vibration of attracting love. Cause I believe in love. So why would I not operate in love? Why would I not do the loving thing, which is to speak to the person that I'm interested in and give a kind word. It doesn't need to be like, can I take you to dinner tomorrow, sir? <laughs> but it can be like, you know, Dang, you know, I'm trying to I'm trying to get those arms just like you. Like, have you been working out for me? Like, <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying? Like, oh, she got the little spicy. We can I we can be flirtatious with it. And it doesn't even have to be even if we if we're not ready for the flirtation. It can just be something as simple as hi, my name is, you know, spicy and I'm trying to make friends. You know, are, are you here at the you know barbecue by yourself? Like, OK, well, we're going to keep each other company until my friend comes back with my drinks. It doesn't have to be, hey, can I take you out to dinner? And now I'm in the guy's role. And so what we're doing is we're limiting ourselves because let's just say uh, you and I are, are both single and we go out to um, what's the club that you met your husband? Greystone. Greystone. OK. <laughs> <laughs> or even the lounge. Let's just say we're grown now. So let, we go to the Soho together. OK. Mm-hmm. You're single. I'm single. But you're waiting for a man to approach you. OK. I'm not waiting. I'm just going to speak to all of the male energies that are happen to be in the room. OK. Who's going to be married first? The one that's speaking the one to that's, the male energy. Why? Well, you're having, you're getting more opportunity. And you're being exposed. Yeah. And I feel like once that, not everyone's look eyes on you mm-hmm. in a sense where it's like, but sometimes, maybe you're not even being seen if you're not saying anything. The mm-hmm. sure. Sometimes the men like the quiet woman sometimes that's kind they of do. Sometimes they do. like not saying are you, anything. Are you a quiet woman? Are mm-hmm. you pretending to be a quiet woman? Mm. I am not a quiet woman. So, but you're <laughs> pretending to be a quiet woman. Therefore, you're going no. to attract the type of man that <laughs> wants a quiet woman. So you are not a vibrational match oh. for the thing you're trying to attract. Because then he's going to get to you and be like, oh, you're loud. You're in, you've been <laughs> pretending to be quiet over here waiting for me to come up to you. 
the, he, the thing, and I understand what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is if we can transform our perspective about it, of I'm just going to create touch points and opportunities for connection, mm-hmm. right? I, that doesn't mean that you have to choose me and I don't have to choose you. But I at least want to know what my options are out there. Because if I'm waiting to be chosen, if I'm waiting for the male species to come up to me and make contact, I am limited in the exposure that I have for that day. If I'm only waiting for men that come up to me on a daily basis, and yes, I get approached all the time, even Mary, right? Like attracted, we're going to get approached. But I don't want to wait for the choosing. I want to actually increase my chances of finding the person that is a good match for me. And if I'm looking at it like, well, if he doesn't come up to me, he doesn't want me. He probably, he, and it's not even like the intimidation thing. He may be like, I'm not out here hollering at chicks. I'm literally just about to go to the gym on my workout, ma'am. Sorry, like you happen to be pumping gas next to me. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not even in the headspace of like trying to like hunt right now, mm-hmm. right? So he might not even be cognizant to the fact that I'm like right there checking him out. So I'm gonna speak and I'm gonna say, Hey there, what's up? What's good? You pumping your gas? Come pump mine too when you're done. <laughs> like, I'm gonna take that opportunity. If he does, if he's not responsive to it, okay, it, that's not that's not my person. My person mm-hmm. is gonna be responsive and, and and feel my energy and be like, oh, actually, pretty. You know what? How much how much your gas costs? Let me. I got your fifty on your tank right here. Actually, my tank is like one twenty. I got your one twenty <laughs> right, right, right here. <laughs> but I'm just saying, do you understand like the touch points of opportunity because? Yeah. We look at it so much as it like it has to be this separate thing, right? Like if you're trying to get new clients or you're trying to interview for a job, if I'm only waiting for headhunters that are recruiting me, I'm going to be broke because they don't know that I exist. I'm just hoping that they find my resume on a LinkedIn or what is it? Indeed. Indeed. (laughs) Like I'm an entrepreneur. I don't even know what the the websites are for anymore. But if I'm waiting for that, I'm waiting to be found versus I'm going to put all my seeds out. I'm going to put all of my, you know, opportunities mm-hmm. and, and open energy out there so that I can get as much like chances as possible to meet this person. Right. Other element is um, we need to be more vocal about what we want with our friends and strangers. So if your bestie knows that like you're looking for love we need to be honest about that girl. Help me find someone. You meet any single men that you get like a good feeling from you send them my way. Okay. So we also need to send our, have our friends helping us recruit. Oh, absolutely. That's happening. Yes. <laughs> I love that. It takes yes. a village. It Unfortunately, takes a village. <laughs> there's no good recruiter. I mean, there's no good men to recruit. I'm like, I wouldn't want any of y'all with my girl. <laughs> Acting crazy out here. Look, we as as friends and like even family, right? Um, we expose ourselves to like a variety of different people, but there's a lot of like like mindedness, right? Mm-hmm. So even if it doesn't, you don't think that it would be like the best fit. You know that your friend is single, and if they happen to be like a nice, kind guy, send them her way. Let her make the decision because you might not necessarily be the necess- like the best picker mm-hmm. necessarily because you're gonna be like maybe more you know less compromising about it, but still send her way and let her decide. The other part about like your friends looking out for you is that it can't, it shouldn't just be friends. It needs to be like family and strangers. So if you're at a party and you're like, okay, I don't know anybody here. If there's a a couple that's beside each other, I love what you guys have going on. If you have a a single uh, best friend or brother, send him my way because I want what you two have. Right. Like we're making we're putting our fillers out there every opportunity that we get. Mm -hmm. And we're not doing that enough when it comes to like trying to make these organic connections. So if Mm -hmm. you're only dependent on the dating app, you're going to like that's only one way that you're going to reach your person. But if every time you go out, you're putting that energy out there that like I'm, I'm on the market, send them my way. I want someone not only am I talking to strangers, I'm joining organizations where I think my person exists. I'm joining clubs and memberships where I think my person might exist. I also have my friends recruiting for me and I'm speaking to strangers every touch point and I'm going up to uh, every man that passes my way, even if I'm not attracted to them, because just because it's not him doesn't mean that this man right here isn't going to invite me to a party that's going to expose me to a new group of people where my man may be. Right. It sounds like I need to always be on my A game. Yeah. And it's it, almost, <laughs> it's, that, it is. And it sounds like, yeah, like you just have to really, it's a, you're vulnerable, you know, like you're really putting yourself out there. You're vulnerable. And you really have to be ready to be in that space, that, like that energy and really putting forth that effort and saying, OK, like I might, today might be the day. So let me make sure I look great. I have a positive 
mindset, all of those things. So are you ready to elevate your mac and cheese game to a whole new level of deliciousness and nutrition? Look no further because Goodles has arrived. It doesn't just taste good, but it's the new healthy mac and cheese I feed my boys, including my husband. <laughs> Goodles has changed the way you think about noodles with their clean ingredients and packing each box full of 21 nutrients from organic plants, 14 grams of protein, and 7 grams of fiber per serving, and prebiotics to support your gut health. Goodles currently comes in 11 different flavors, including a vegan mac and two gluten-free options. They're the first box mac and cheese ever to receive the Clean Label Purity Award certification. That means that their final product has been tested by a third party for over 400 contaminants, and they determined Goodles met their highest standards. Goodles is also a low glycemic index food, so it gives you steady energy instead of a carb crash. Say goodbye to bland, uninspired pasta dishes. Goodles is here to shake things up. Goodles are your go-to noodles that are not only tasty, but also packed with goodness. And trust us, it's not just for kids. Goodles is a hit with the whole family. To learn more, visit goodles.com today. Well, Yonks, what would you say, like, being out, right? Because it's... I feel like it just depends. Like sometimes when you're out with me, right there, we're all like married in relationships. And then it's like her, or then we have another girlfriend who's single and it's like just kind of them and everybody's kind of taken type of thing. Mm -hmm. And then there's like another like group of all single friends that maybe there's a completely different outing experience that she's having with mm -hmm. them. Right. And so what would you say, like when you're going out with whoever, whichever group is the common theme that you're like, Hey, this is what I'm coming up against this is why I feel like it's hard to find like my person. Is it the friends that are, you know, cock blocking you? <laughs> what, like, what is the situation that you're feeling like, hey, this is why it's a challenge? Well, I just feel like there's not a lot of courting going on. And maybe that's because mm -hmm. I'm not putting myself like, OK, I'm going to be intentional and talk to three men because mm -hmm. we'll go out and we get so caught up with the girlfriends that we're just like yeah. having so much fun. And men are looking and, you know, and wondering and all of this, but mm -hmm. we're not approaching or, you know, making any like in initiations of like, hey, I like you or you're cute. Mm -hmm. um, we're waiting on like guys to say, OK, are they going to make a move? So in my, our experience, in my experience, we're not seeing a lot of like courting and men coming up to us, it's just, we'll go out to Joey's or we'll go out somewhere and have a great time, but I'm not getting like a lot of people coming up to us. Action. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's not a lot of action. And do you think that that's because like we, we always talk about is like, are women too accessible? Mm. Right. So what's the urge for a man to actually really want to court someone like Summer when he can just get summer on the side for a quick date and be out, you know, in and out where he, there's no real commitment. Like are men really wanting to commit? Like are men really wanting those older traditional values in women? You know what I mean? Like, so I feel like in our age group, it's either you're already married and you found your person mm -hmm. early on, or now you're like stuck trying to figure it out. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'm, it's just it's sending mixed signals to me, like from hearing mm -hmm. all my girlfriends. It's like, well, what is going on? Because yeah. It doesn't seem like these men really want to be in top tier, like top tier, natural, good quality. That's like my mom yep. relationships. They yep. want the like. Barbie made up, blow up doll <laughs> girl. I don't know. It seems strange what's going on. I don't know. What are your thoughts? OK, so we got several things going on right now. Um, there's there's. What you're speaking to, which is like the culture of dating right now, mm -hmm. um, which also lends itself to the dynamic of uh, the shift in what courtship looks like traditionally versus now. So, yes, the access to women is at an all time abundance. But if the male species can convince us that we need to be in competition with each other and if the male species can convince us that there's not enough of them to go around we will be hungry and eat whatever they serve us. Okay. So what my approach to it is, is yes, the numbers aren't necessarily in our favor, but there's still an abundance of men. If we were to compare like successful men to successful women, we're killing it. Okay. As women, we're like, we are killing it right now, but I'm not worried 
about they're not necessarily being enough. I'm worried about how I'm behaving and showing up because I'm going to still eat. You can go hungry, but I'm going to eat. And you have to have that mentality when it comes to how your energy shows up. Right. And I don't mean that um, it needs to be a competition between us. It needs to be like, I'm going to focus on my energy and what my relationship goal is. And am I doing the things that serve my relationship goal? If tapping out and giving up, because I don't think that out of the 8 billion people in the world, I have a person that exists. That's the first problem. If I don't think that there's enough, then, and I'm going to just go hungry then of course I'm going to behave distant, cold. I'm not going to smile when men walk by. I'm not going to speak to them because I don't think that I have a chance with them mm-hmm. or that, you know, the person that I want isn't going to court me anymore. Because us as women have been throwing ourselves at them, we don't demand uh, the courtship the way that we used to in order for them to sleep with us, in order for them to procreate with us, in order for them to spend 10 to 20 years with us. We don't even demand like the ring anymore. There's so many things that we are compromising Because we think that like we have to settle, that we are helping create a culture of a plethora of men who abide by that, who are like, oh, I don't got to do anything because it's not required of me. Mm. But guess what? I'm not even worried about those men because if those men come along, I'm not going to choose them. Mm -hmm. We're at a place in our lives where we have to also be extremely aware of the difference between the F boys and the superior men. And the superior man has a higher level of consciousness. And if you as a woman have a higher level of consciousness, you will attract that man. You will select that man. That's not to say that the F boys aren't going to holler at you because you're a pretty woman. They're going to come up to you. But who you choose and who you decide to entertain plays a huge role in it. So we don't need to be worried about necessarily the shift going on. Let me as a relationship expert worry about that so I can seep with media and into the minds of them and into the coaching of like what we need to do as a as a culture. But as a dater out there, you need to be worried about one thing only, and that is being prepared with the tools of how you're going to handle it when he is in front of you. I'm putting myself in the right environment. And how am I going to treat him when he's in front of me? Am I prepared for that? Is my esteem where it should be? Is my worth where it should be? Mm -hmm. Is my is my life in order? And if it's not okay, what chaos do I have going on that I might potentially bring to the relationship what do I need to heal right now? What growth, what growth do I need to do if I want to attract a man who's in a growth mindset? We need to be worried about those things, not the F boys that are going to approach us that don't want commitment or who don't believe in like marriage anymore because a ton of them do exist and they belong with the F girls. Hmm. But I'm not going to fall for it. Not at this point in my life. In my 20s, yes, or you could have caught me. But at this point in our lives, right. we are looking for just a specific type of person and we're going to weave through the ones that aren't for us and that don't serve us. We're not going to stay as long as we used to for the one, with the ones that we're taking advantage or the ones that didn't value us. So we're going through it quicker now, now that you're more aware. Right. I think the awareness is what I have my like, need to be reminded of mm-hmm. so that I can I know what pool of men I'm even, you know, trying to attract. Yeah. Because I think I get lost in the sauce, girl. <laughs> So I'm like, yeah, right. lost in the sauce. I'm like, he's cute, telling me yeah. all this, and then you know. Well, what? I think that that would be a good topic of talking about how women can stay true to their value because sometimes, like what Summer is talking about, is <clears throat> a man does a nice gesture for you, uh-huh. and it's like, oh, he's the one. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Where, but hold on, he needs to do a little bit more. It's yeah. not just about that. Like, let like. A week, two weeks, a month is not enough to be like, hey, you're my girlfriend. (laughs) Like, we need time. Like, and I always talk about like back in the day, although it was similar to you and your husband is like, boss and I, we met and it is like the thing of like, Mm -hmm. we never left each other's side. Yeah. But we weren't official until like 10 months later down the road Mm -hmm. where we were like, okay, something, something's up now. Now we we need to lock this down. But it was that time of dating each other and getting to know each other and having a few arguments and and yeah, you don't know how someone knowing. is until you know how they argue. Well, <laughs> I also have a hard time dating more than one person. That's another problem. I really do. <laughs> because I, I have like um, like little kid with a puppy syndrome. I'm like, I like you so much. This is it. You know, I don't want to. I can't get my attention to like really go to anyone else. And I am just like one track minded when mm-hmm. I'm dating. And I'm calling it like intentional dating. But then you're I not think- dating. You're committing to men who aren't committed to you. Mm. Mm. speak on it right (laughs) come on spicy because if you're making a conscious choice like dang 
I know I should be dating multiple people, but I don't want to because I like you in particular. Why does he need to keep proving to you who he is or showing up for you when you've already committed to him and he hasn't asked for that? Right. There's right. no competition. So if he doesn't have any competition, what, where's the fight and the grit going to come from in order for him to have to like prove himself to you in order for him to work for the relationship in order for him to try to pour into you and grow and show you like who he is and what he's capable of. You've mm -hmm. already committed. So he's checked out. So yeah. there's no more fight. There's no mm -hmm. incentive mm -hmm. for, you know what I'm saying? Like he there's didn't no have more to chase. Yeah. He didn't have to work with it. You've already brought us up with him. You've already like showed him that you could cook. You've already like oh. offered to take care of his kid. <laughs> you've so already shot right now. You've already done all the stuff. You're like, oh, you can't find with someone to clean your house. I know a great mate. Or you know what? I'll that come do crazy. it for you. Like you're already throwing all these things up there because you're like, I want to prove to him mm -hmm. how great I am and how valuable I am. And if I can show him how valuable I am, then he will see my value is more than the other women that he might be potentially dating. That's exactly how I feel. And think, yeah. <laughs> I feel like, but I feel like I that's no, a lot of how women feel and think in like the dating world. I like, have no poker face. I'm like giving you all of my cards, showing uh -huh. you exactly what it is. And I'm like, Dominic's like, y'all can reel it in, please. And <laughs> I, I do, I, I struggle with that. Cause yeah. I'm like, I want, I want someone to see, you know, the that version of, of me version of like you. outside of that surface level. And I'm like, I get excited and yeah. That's what I, I always say this. This is what I, we always talk about. I'm like, Summer is like the best wife. <laughs> I believe it. But, and I've never said this. She's not the worst girlfriend or the worst dating person, but it's like the guy can't even get to her being the best wife because she's just, I don't even understand. It's like, if they would, because she can't reel them in in the beginning. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, she's like, I, I can't explain what it is. It's like, she's just like showing all her cards, yeah. like she just said. And, and so that, then the guy just goes mm -hmm. off when really it's like, damn, he's missing out. Because really at the end of the day, she does cook. Mm -hmm. She does clean. She is funny. She is a great, uh, fun and yeah, she's party girl. Like, she's showing yeah, all her best. She's yeah. great. So it's like with men, they're just wired so differently. You show them yeah. that in the beginning and they're like, all right. Well, over. that's like having like, well, I just thought of like an analogy. Like when you have a feast and you just put everything on the table at mm -hmm. once, you're not eating everything. You're going to pick. <laughs> Facts. That's, that's how I'm kind of looking. You, can, you need the appetizer right. first. Oh, I want more. Now I want, I'm ready for, for dinner now. Now I'm ready for dessert. Mm -hmm. Instead of it just all... That makes sense. Well, I also think as human beings, mm -hmm. we only value what we know we had to earn. So if these things were just handed to us, we wouldn't appreciate it the way when you know that you have had to work for something, when you mm -hmm. know that someone has been um, uh, exclusive with who they allow to have access to them. And so when you give someone who hasn't earned the trust, earned um, the, the resources and the you know, things that you have to offer, it says that you don't really value yourself. It says that it's not as valuable as, and, and, here's, the, and here's the problem. You will be a prey, you will be prey for a man who wants to take advantage of that. Mm, mm, um, the way that I tell it to my clients is, um, uh, let's just say, uh, I'm gonna just use a, a, a Louis bag. He can come across you and be like, oh my God, I found a Louis bag. But because you're willing to sell yourself short for nothing, and you think you're a, what's it, Dooney and Birch? Or what's the, give me coach. Okay. Coach. Uh, you think you're a coach. You're, you're giving him coach price, but he knows that you're a Louis bag, but you don't believe you're a Louis bag. He's, he's like, oh, I just came up. But because he didn't have to pay nothing for the Louis bag, he's not going to take care of the Louis bag. He's not going to treat the Louis bag with any respect. He's not going to put it on the highest shelf. He's going to throw the Louis bag on the floor. He's going to, and, and so that's how we're treating ourselves when we don't make it earned and a privilege to be with us. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that we're unkind about it, right? I still want you to show up in your feminine energy and, and be loving. But what it looks like is in exchange for what you're showing me, you get this. Mm -hmm. Not, oh, I have feelings for you, therefore you get this. Because emotions are fleeting, they're temporary. Mm -hmm. It needs to be, okay, sir, you showed me this, now I will show you this. Oh, you showed me this, now I will show you this. OK, you take a step. I take a step. Now right. you take a step. I'm going to take 100 steps right. because I want you to meet me <laughs> after these 100 steps. I want you to feel what I feel. And you're jumping into the red intimacy way too soon. Mm -hmm. So what is your advice for the hopeless romantic? Right? <laughs> what, what would be 
the right obviously there's not a timeline it's off of what the person is giving you but what is your advice for someone like that like we talk about me again moments right and you were talking about that you had to kind of go through something where mm-hmm. you've got to gather yourself before you met your husband and in the same breath it's like we always talk about and even nature and i were going through the same thing of like rebooting ourselves for to be present in our as a mother as yeah. a, as a wife but like for someone like summer what would you say like her reset needs to be like okay this is the way I should conduct myself in order to be the Louis bag. Okay. Right. Um, that's a great question. So I'm going to give you the pizza. Um, the pizza is the exercise that I have my clients do. Okay. So we're going to first assess like what it is that you want. Right. So what the pizza is, is um, a roadmap to getting closer to that person. So every great pizza has a uh, crust, which is the foundation sauce and then the toppings. Okay. The crust is what do I believe a good person to be? What do Mm. I believe makes just a good human being? Okay. You're going to write those five qualities down. The sauce is how do I need to be treated in order to feel love? Okay. How does someone need to take care of me? How does someone need to show up for me in order for me to fall in love with them? That's the sauce. The toppings is how does someone need to look in order for me to be sexually attracted to them to take my clothes off? Okay. The problem with this dating right now in modern dating is that we are going Topping sauce crust. How does someone look? Mm. Mm. How do they treat me? And then we're like, let me discover if they're a good person. Oh my God, you're not a good person. It's because we went topping sauce crust. Mm. What we need to, as women who want to be in love, I'm not talking about the women who are like, I'm going to be single the rest of my life and live independent and just travel the world. I'm talking about the woman who wants to be a wife. Okay. You need to date with the intentions of only devouring your pizza. So what are the five qualities that I need to believe he's a good human What are the five qualities that I need in order to feel loved? And what are the five qualities that I need in order to take my clothes off for him? Okay. I like that. And then you're going to date with that roadmap. But before you start dating with that roadmap, am I this roadmap? Am I these things? Am I these five qualities that I need in order to believe that he's a good person? Am I those five things? Am I these five qualities when it comes to the sauce? Do I have, do I treat myself in a way of love? With these five qualities for the sauce. If Mm -hmm. I'm not treating myself with those, with that superior treatment, then I don't deserve a superior man Mm -hmm. because he's going to see you don't even treat yourself that good. Why should I treat you that good? Oh, you don't love yourself. I definitely not going to love you. Right. And then the toppings is the most superficial element because the toppings can be interchanged. Toppings can be replaced. The toppings are superficial. So if they have at least a few, three out of five toppings we still rock with them Mm -hmm. because if you tell me you met the sauce and the crust, but he, maybe he's, you know, balding and he wasn't tall enough. I'm like, girl, that's still a good pizza. Mm -hmm. You better go. You better stay with that that man. Yes. Eat that pizza. (laughs) (laughs) And I I tell people all the time, I'm like, okay, teeth was, you know, one of my toppings. Uh, My husband needed Invisalign. And I was like, you know what? You are, you are my pizza. We're going to get you Invisalign once I make you fall in love with me. And my husband has that Invisalign. Mm. So, <laughs> so I'm just saying, you like, made that happen. Yeah, I made that happen. Yes. Yeah, so and now he got, he got straight teeth, but our baby's going to have crooked teeth because both of us have <laughs> braces. So my baby's going to get braces too. Okay. But that's what I'm saying. I'm not, that can't be, that superficial element can't be enough to stop my heart if I really right. want love and I want a partnership. Right. So that's going to be your roadmap. That's where you're going to start. Write your pizza out. And then you're going to navigate the dating pool with, if you're not my pizza, I need to move on quick. If mm-hmm. you're not my pizza, I need to move on quick. Cause mm-hmm. I'm not dating right now for a F buddy. I'm not dating right now in my whole face. I am dating right now to become my wife. Right. So if you are not my pizza, I won't, I can't even respect you as a human because if you don't meet the qualifications for the crust, why are you even entertaining someone? If mm-hmm. you don't believe them to be a good person, so you're right. still going to go out with him because he was cute. But he's not a good person. Right. He's disloyal. He's not honest. He's like, you have to come up with those qualities. So you're going to do this exercise. I will. And, and I think I can do it. Because I think I, I can definitely do the pizza. Mm-hmm. I feel like I have like a good core, like best friend and sisters and people that, you know, I can help. That can help. That are rooting for you. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. I think I just need to just get myself out there and, you know, initiate. That's the other part. If That's we're just, a- uh, can you, so challenge yourself, right? I'm going to speak to three men a day and it doesn't have to be hollering. I'm just going to compliment three men a day. I'm going to walk by man and say, you know what? I like those shoes. Did you wear those for me? <laughs> no. <laughs> did you wear those did for me? Right, right, right. But did you? That's the part that makes it flirtation. So if I just say, I like your shoes, 
That's a compliment. But the part that makes it flirtatious is, did you wear them for me? So something as simple I, as that. Did you just holler at him? Did you promise to pay his bills? Did you say you were going to treat to dinner? No. If he's receptive to it and he's catching what you're throwing, now we get a conversation going. He yeah. still needs to treat. He still needs to court you. He still needs to be consistent. You're just initiating the conversation and saying and actually matching open energy because open energy is not I'm waiting for somebody to find me. Open energy is not only am I welcoming, but mm -hmm. I am showing up as an amazing welcoming host. Right. And I think guys need that help because they'll see a beautiful woman mm -hmm. and they want to approach, but they're like, oh, is she? They're, I think they're scared of rejection. So being very like just blunt, like, did you wear those for me? He's like, oh, okay, wait, hold on. There's something going on right here. She <laughs> yeah, likes me. Yeah. So now I'm going to approach her. I don't think that you're going to have an issue doing that. She's like a social butterfly. And that's part of the things that she's had to, I don't, we always say, are we dimming our light? Are we doing this? But, <laughs> you know, she was the one that was, uh -huh. everybody knows Summer's here at the party. So she's, had, she's tried to be like a little bit more reserved. So she doesn't look like I'm in my party girl era. Uh -huh. vibe, you know what I mean? So I think that you find that, sorry, I think that you finding that balance of, being outspoken, but still kind of like cutesy flirty. Mm -hmm. I don't find that it's going to be an issue for you. Okay. I think the main, <laughs> yeah. like, okay, I think accepted. her main thing is to exercise the self-control mm. and stay true yes. to the crust and yes. stay true to like, you know, just because he tried to yep. bring you somewhere that you're not like, you know. Well, so that's the, so you, you hit on the money, right? If you know that she has more of like an anxious attachment style, then, and, and you fall in love easily just off of like the words that he said or the one time he showed you a good time, <laughs> you're going to need to pace yourself. So yes, he may have shown up. Let's just say he shows up on the first date and he is the pizza and you're like, oh my God, I got my pizza. You don't know if you have your pizza because you haven't tested it out and you haven't given it enough time to really see if you're meeting his representative or like the actual him. And mm -hmm. time is seriously the <laughs> only thing that you That's will be crazy. able to have to actually measure it. Like, mm -hmm. yes, he may have done something on, on my crust or on, you know, on my sauce this one time, but can he do it 15 times? Can he mm. do it 20 times? Can I show up in that energy this many times? And if the answer is like, no, he's not consistent with those things, then we're gonna have to say, okay, that's not really who he is. And he is actually showing you who he is. Mm -hmm. I want my husband so bad. I'm prepared to walk away from this man who has the toppings, but no crust. Right. Girl. <laughs> You're over here hearing boss speak to you. <laughs> Literally, she's probably like cringing, like, oh, because time and time again with every guy that she dates or whatever it is, boss will be like, Summer, just remember, this is the representative. Right. This is the representative. I'm like, well, it's true. Then she's like, OK, I got it. I got it. And, and you know, it turns out. So then you said the same exact words. I'm cracking up because there is some truth to it. And that's yeah. the problem with the social media is like and that's why I like the in person, mm -hmm. because you can immediately feel someone's energy, their yeah. vibe the way they truly kind of interact. Mm -hmm. Whereas on Instagram, it's all I mean, um, Hinge and whatever those things are, you're it's like curated. putting quotes that you've never said before. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Repeating somebody else's it's post that you saw. Thing. Yeah. Avery, it's like the funniest thing I used to say about her. On her Instagram bio, it was like, it's all good, baby, baby. And I'm like, <laughs> you quoting Biggie Small lyrics? Are you joking? <laughs> are you kidding? Um, and it's I'm like, put a Taylor Swift line on there. You know what I mean? Like, it, 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 it's saying something like that, that social, I mean, the um, social dating or whatever mm -hmm. they call it, digital dating. It just, it's tough because you're not getting the, the energy or, through yeah, the person. The you're like getting what you're, they're selling. Yes. Right. But I honestly think that it is tough both ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that we can meet the representative in person and still look, all of us have been in a toxic relationship at some point in our time with percent. someone that we met in person, mm -hmm. let alone online dating. So it's, it's, it's not like one or the other. Mm -hmm. It has more to do how am I navigating dating people period, whether I meet you in person or I meet you digitally, mm -hmm. what am I doing to ensure that I am dating my pizza? What am I doing to ensure that I am showing up as my pizza? And if you show up as your pizza, you'll be able to sniff out the BS. Like, I don't know what, right? Because it will, it will be revealed to you because not only are you more aware, but you also have more discernment when you know, this is not aligned with me. Sorry, sir. I heard you. I, I get that you want to, you know, order extra caviar, but unfortunately uh, you know, you're, you don't seem to be a loyal person or you don't seem to be attentive or you're not a great communicator. 
you'll be able to walk away easier when you Mm -hmm. know this is not what's good for me. And your problem is, is you haven't learned to love what's good for you. Right. Mm -hmm. It's it's and, and that's the hardest pill for women to swallow. We want all this like we want the cake. We want the candy. We want the popcorn. But that's not the stuff that feeds our soul. That's not the healthy nutrients that we can actually live off of. Yeah. That we can survive off of. We don't want to eat our vegetables. Like, we need kale juice. <laughs> <laughs> I got my kale juice. <laughs> True. Too much. <laughs> Too much kale juice. <laughs> um, okay, so we are, That this has been incredible, but I do want to just leave on this note is what would your tips just in general mm-hmm. be for women? Five tips that you're like, do this, 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 and this to jumpstart your dating for the single ladies out there. The single ladies need to first and foremost, create their pizza. Mm-hmm. That's like the first thing, right? Um, and make sure that they are their pizza. Uh, other, other element is if you were struggling, I definitely recommend a relationship coach. I think, um, and I'm a huge advocate of therapy as well. Uh, therapy is going to help you with the like self-awareness portion. The coach is actually going to help you with the actualization, right? Like uh, we, we can learn why we've made these, you know, negative choices in our life, but you actually need that person to like get in your ass and tell you when you're messing up mm-hmm. and what you can be doing better. So because right. you maybe you have like a, a, a um, anxious attachment style, you need somebody to like hold you accountable to the, ah, 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 like, mm-hmm. You don't do this this time. Mm -hmm. And you can't always entrust your friends with that responsibility because your friends have so much going on. And your friends also have a biased opinion of you because they've seen your track record. So sometimes they will not be able to see you in a certain light or not be able to even recognize that someone may be a good partner for you. And honestly, I don't think that our friends should be choosing our partners anyways. And, And what I mean by that is like, yes, they should make introductions to people that could be potential suitors. But I don't think at the end of the day, if it's a choice between like, should I marry this man or not? My friend should have that say or that vote. Oh, right. And I don't think family members should have that vote either. I think you need to make a choice for what's best for you. Right. Because best believe like our parents didn't take our opinion into account when they chose their husband or wife. Our our best friends are not going to take our opinion into account. They're going to be like, no, this is my husband and I'm going to marry him anyways. So I think that you need to operate from a place of like, I'm only going to receive information from people who I entrust that are in happy, healthy, loving relationships that are doing it for themselves and that want the best for me. Um, And where you expose your to is is like expose yourself to is a, is another huge one, right? Like the energies that you keep around you, but also what does your social and dating life look like? If you aren't um, speaking to men on a daily basis and you aren't going places that men exist, how do you expect to meet the thing that you say that you want? You Mm. must not want it that bad if you are not putting yourself in an environment where that thing exists. Right. We got to, we got to jot down that where those. (laughs) I know. I'm like, well, where are they? I want to go. (laughs) Like, if I was Okay. What kind of dude do you want? So describe to me, um, if if we too, we're not going to do your pizza right now because that's going to take you a second. But describe to me um, the sports that your person plays. Uh, where, what uh, level of, what career does he have? What um, hobbies is he into? What are, he, what is he passionate about? Mm. If you can describe those things to me, then we go to those places. And I'm like, sporting events are always like a, a great place to go uh, to meet men because there's a plethora of them there. Mm-hmm. But where are you going? That's like honed in. If you want somebody who's in finance, are you eating in the finance district at lunchtime and speaking to men? I'm just right. asking, like, what are you doing to meet the, what you want? Right, right. No, tell me, what are you doing to meet oh. the kind of man you want? Where are you going? I'm going to... Joey's. Joey's, <laughs> yeah, restaurants. I'm going to, um, like, friend, like, we'll go to, like, you know, like, we'll put on events or whichever okay. kind of thing. Yeah, it's she's kind of, not, like, doing anything I, like, like what you're saying. Okay, right, yeah. <laughs> I'm not, like, intentionally picking locations, like... This uh, these men frequent this place. Okay, so that's part of the thing. If we and, and events are actually good. Like if you throw events um, and you invite people, always tell them like invite every single person you know. Invite friends of friends and friends of friends. Like invite because you also want a new environment. Part of the problem is like if you haven't met it in your social group right now, that means he's in a different social group. So you mm-hmm. need to make new friends and expose yourself to those groups. Which is why I say like organizations and clubs are always helpful. Mm-hmm. But if you don't want to meet him online, if you're like refusing like to 
put in the work there, then you have to put it in elsewhere. Right. You can't just like not do anything. Right, right. But I'm not saying he's not at Joey's. He could be at Joey's. <laughs> but even when you go to Joey's, you're not removing yourself from your the table of your friends and being like, I'm gonna go say hi to the fella over there at the bar. Like you're gonna have to show up for yourself. Mm-hmm. And it looks like struggling conversation. Oh, I think you found yourself a relationship coach, girl. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'm like, just yeah. challenge yourself. Ladies, if you could do anything, challenge yourself to give compliments to men three a day. Just challenge yourself to give, like, just start with that. Yeah. And oftentimes we will say, well, I don't have a problem being social. How are you around men who you're attracted to? Will Nervous. you speak to men who you're attracted to with the same energy that you would somebody who you're not attracted to? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's a good thing then. I okay. will. <laughs> okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. She, I think she's. Oh yeah, I I'm she's in gonna it. do it. I think you're good in that in that front. It's just once the man that she's attracted to is shows some attraction to her, how does she? <laughs> oh Lord! <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget. They were so funny back in the day. Um, she would always tell me her and her, her sister is also named Dominique, and she's like, "You guys are so easy with it. You guys just like act like you don't care. Like whatever the guy you know does, whatever. I'm off that." But it's so funny because I would be on the phone. I used to live in San Diego and boss would call me, do you want to go to this concert or whatever? And I'm like, "Uh, I don't think I can make it. I'm not (laughs) sure. Let me just think about it. I'm like, girl, I'll be there in two hours. I'm on the road. But he's thinking that two hours is me like, "Mm, okay, I'll call you back. So then when I'd be like approaching LA in Orange County, all right, I think I'll go. (laughs) But it was playing hard to get. And then he was feeling like he had to work for it, you know what I mean, in the the way. So it's fine to be, I say that because, like, to me, it's like, it's fine to be all giddy in the background, but don't be giddy in front of the man. Like, oh, thank God. <laughs> right, you, know, right. you gotta play it cool in the back, in mm-hmm. the front, but you're like, thank God in the back. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. So funny. It's hard. Your uh-huh. advice is like, so just really quick, you say, so you played games, um, yeah, like uh, you played hard to get, right? Mm-hmm. I'm telling you not play hard to get. Don't be easy to get. I'm telling you not to play. I'm saying actually don't be easy to get. You have to be earned because right. you are worth a million dollars. I need you to act like you are worth a million mm-hmm. dollars versus pretending like you're worth a million dollars. I want you right. to actually believe mm-hmm. that you are worth a million dollars. Right. You know, I'm yeah. equating it to money. I'm just using money as an example. Right. But do you understand what I'm saying when I speak to value? Yes. Yes. I don't want you and to And that's pretend. why it makes me sad. Cause I'm like, man, like, why am I like, am I get like giving all those, like playing, showing my cards so quickly and like not. Because you think you're lucky that they like you. Mm-hmm. You believe I'm so lucky to be in his presence. And oh my God, I'm so excited right. that he likes me. Mm-hmm. But I need to like reel it back in. You need to really believe to, that he's lucky mm-hmm. to be in your presence. Yeah. Yeah. And mm. I think that goes into like just being, I don't know, like working on yourself and knowing what Therapy. you're worth and, and rem- reminding us of the crest of the values and the morals and who we are and who we want to attract. Mm-hmm. Cause it's true. I'll get so wrapped up in like, Oh, you know, the initial meet cue or whatever. And I'll forget like, okay, he needs to actually work. Cause I'm a prize. Like I, I work hard. I'm a great person. I want to meet someone like minded. And yeah. And so like, even though you said you were like playing the game, what you were actually doing um, was trying to control yourself. You were like actually like trying to show like self-regulation where you gave him an opportunity to then like step up and show you that like the words he was saying actually matches like the actions. And I was 21. (laughs) 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 But now, yeah, there would be no type of. I mean, I've seen, you know, it's, you're kind of like, at this point, you're like, you've seen it all. You really got to show your cards. But um, I will say thank you so of much course, Spicy, course, for course. coming on. Summer, thank you so much for being vulnerable. Thank you. Getting all, I want you guys to connect later. Yes, right. for sure. Please, I got you, girl. please, please. please. Yes. And ladies, please remember your pizza. <laughs> I want to know what your guys' pizza is. And um, we can't wait to hear from you guys. Hope you guys love the episode. <laughs> thank you. That was so Yay. cute. Let's go make some pizza. You need to contact. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I Honestly, know. You probably- like.